So first off, I'm going to give a quick update on Container D. So from the last summit, we've got a lot done. We're almost feature complete. So the only things that we have left to do before we cut a 1.0 alpha release within the next week or two is we need to get our events API done and then uh, some filtering primitives for querying the APIs. And then we've got a couple like housekeep housekeeping tasks of like going through all of our gRPC services, making sure they're all consistent and uh, making sure error codes are where they should be and things like that. So we're really close to being fully feature complete. Once we get events in, we already have a PR open for that and up. It's currently in review. And then you can look for us cutting a 1.0 alpha really soon in the next few weeks. So a couple of the things that I'm going to demo today is some of the features we've been working on over the past month or so to get us where we need to be. And since Containerd is meant to be used by uh, many different consumers from like Docker, Swarm, Kubernetes, things like that, we wanted to make sure we had a, a good client for everyone to build integrations on. So one of the things that we really focused on is this Containerd client. And so it's it has a nice import path. You just import Containerd and you have it. And then we go down here, we can see we create a new client. You just give it the Containerd address. This client also um, takes some additional options as far as namespaces goes that Stephen will talk on later. But once you have a client, you can do a lot of a lot of nice things. And even though you're interacting with a daemon on your system, you can write your code like any other Go code for working with containers. So you have client.pool. You can give it an image name. You can say whether to unpack this image into a snapshot or not. So snapshotters are like overlay, better FS, things like that. And so once you pull down an image, uh, you can generate uh, OCI spec from it. And so this container D supports Docker images, OCI images, uh, OCI containers with the runtime specs. And there, we give you, you can still make your spec yourself, but we also give you a lot of nice tools where we generate a good default for you, at, like from all the experience on the Docker side. And then you have options like we want to localize this spec to the image that we just pulled down. So that will get the args in uh, current working directory and things like that. So once we have a spec, we can go ahead and create a container. And we had to, if you use Containerd a couple months ago, containers were a little different than what we had today. And what we had to do was we needed to split up containers from a metadata object to containers as a runtime object where it has a PID and everything. Because if you've ever worked on Docker today, there's this big state struct on the container. And you never quite know what state a container is in. Is it created? Is it running? Does it have a PID? Does it not have a PID? And so in Containerd, this container object here is your metadata object that you attach resources to. So root file systems are allocated to it. You have a spec on it. You could attach IP addresses to it, things like that. And so a container is more of a metadata object. And then we have a concept of a task, which is your runtime object that is fulfilled by run C or whatever. So a task will always have a PID. And it will be, it'll have live namespaces, a PID, and things like that, C groups attached to it. And so you have your container metadata object. It lives past multiple runs. A task is a single like start, stop, delete of a, a running process. And so with, with the container D container, we can create a new task. A task has a bunch of options, this containerd.stdio. That means just use my current processes standard IO for the containers IO. And 
if you uh, you see this is just a little domain that I use to demo this stuff. So once we have like a task in the client, you can call, call task.wave. You could get the exit status from this. And then we have a split from create and start. So if you've used run C, there's this, this problem with networking, which I'll show in the second second thing, but you need to have live name, namespaces to set up uh, network interfaces. And so we split the, the container creation between create the container, get a pig, get namespaces, and actually start the user's process so you have time to bring up network interfaces and things like that. So that's kind of the basic flow of a containerd client of creating a container and getting that stuff uh, running. And then we also worked on checkpoint and restore, which is a lot different from what we have today in Docker Experimental. So along with the client, after you have a running container, you can checkpoint it. And when you checkpoint it, we checkpoint the memory of the container, open FDs, things like that, so you can restore it again later and do live migration or cloning of containers. And what we did with containerd was, since we had the image uh, work built into it. What we do is when you checkpoint a container, we create a OCI image or a manifest that you can push to a registry. So you can start doing live migration with container D with just container D, a registry on your network, and then you can migrate containers across that. So after, in this little example, after we checkpoint it, uh, we get like a descriptor for the manifest, we print that out, wait for the exit, and then I just did uh, some more examples here where we start a new, create a new container and a new task and say, hey, use this checkpoint when you restore, and it does the create start again, then kills it and returns. So we can uh, run run this example, and what it does is it pulls down Redis, runs Redis, waits two seconds, checkpoints it, it gives us that uh, digest here, and then it runs it again, and then exits. So like we totally kill it in between this part and then restore it, and if we do a sudo disk content git and this hash, So here's the checkpoint manifest that it creates, and we still have some work to do on the registries to accept this, but it has your full container's memory data checkpointed, it checkpoints the RW layers and migrates those with it, and so you basically have everything in this image to migrate containers to different systems and things like that. And then my last example was basically showing the same flow, but a lot of people ask, how do you do networking with Containerd? So uh, this is just something I put together last night because someone else asked internally about it. And so when we generate this spec, I want to replace these args with IPA so we can see interfaces within Containerd. And I have some like nasty netlink code here to just generate a VF pair and attach it to the Docker bridge that's already on the machine. So with the client, we basically create our, our container and task just like we did before we do this new task and we'll get a, a running process with the new network namespace and all this stuff. And from our VF pair, I call set on it and then this set, all it does is the netlink call to set this BF peer name into the task pig. So from that, from the task, you get the PID. It can find the network namespace for that. And then we start it. And when you set your network interfaces in between creating of the task and starting of the task, it'll make sure you have plenty of time to bring up the network interfaces and do all that work. So uh, you can run that and you'll see like, you would just see 
if we remove that set line, you would just have a loop back interface, and then we set in this new VF123 into it. So container D's API is split up, so you don't have to use hooks. And like, I'm personally not a fan of hooks. I think they're really ugly and fragile. And I'd rather have an API designed to uh, split up the calls where you can control execution flow as a caller instead of relying on hooks to be injected somewhere in between the execution life cycle of whatever you're working with. So that's kind of the client checkpoint and restore and how you'd use networking with Containerd. And Steven's going to come up and talk about namespaces and filtering. I'm going to show you uh, a little bit about namespaces and then our filter system that we've got going. Um, so this is um, so this is just a branch I've been working on for filters. Um, so I'm basically going to show you my development environment, and then I'm going to show you namespaces in action within that development environment. Um, so you can see here I have a bunch of containers with labels and all sorts of other garbage. Um, I have my images. Um, there's, you know, just all sorts of stuff in here, uh, but I don't really want to see any of this. So, um, oops, let's. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna uh, switch into another namespace because for this demo, we don't really want to see any of this stuff. Um, I'm gonna create one called SJD. So I can run those two same commands. So container ls, nothing there, uh, and images ls, nothing there. So that's the first bit of magic, and that's where we're all clapping right there. Um, so, uh, the, so the other thing I'm going to show you, too, um, in relation to this is uh, pulling multi-arc images. Um, so this is uh, at Trollin Golang. I think Trollin is owned by Tianan, who uh, manages Docker libraries. But this is, uh, before I pull it, I'm going to show you uh, what this looks like. Um, and this is actually. A, uh, what's called a manifest list. Uh, in OCI, it's called an image index. And basically, what we have here are all of the uh, various multi arc variations. So we have like a AMD 64, we have an ARMv7, we've got a 386, uh, PowerPC, Little Endian, S390X, pretty cool. Uh, Container D, um, we discovered, can actually pull these. It took us one patch, uh, so that's pretty good. So we can pull this, and this will pull all of the, um, unfortunately, that formatting stinks at this size. But you can see here it pulled uh, everything having to do with that. Um, we can't run them yet, but they're there. We're pulling multi-arc images. Um, the other thing I want to show you is basically, um, so I'm running a, um, a registry here with Containerd. Um, oh, whoops, that is not the registry. Um, oh, that was the registry. So a um, li little, a uh, couple of things here um, I want to show you on this run command. Um, it's got host networking, um, and then this is just the regular Docker registry image. I've given it a, a Unicode, uh, a, the year of the dog, that's dog in, in Chinese, um, to show you that labels are actually Unicode aware. So uh, that's kind of cool. I don't know if it's a good idea or not yet, but we'll see. Um, anyway, so this should run the registry. Uh, ooh. Good. So now we're running a registry, um, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to actually push into a container D ran registry. So I'm going to push a multi arc image uh, from Trollin Golang at Docker IO into my local registry. Um, this isn't particularly necessary right now. This is this is all Dockery syntax, but we can we'll talk more about that at the summit today. Um, so I'm going to push that into our local registry. Uh, and this is just this is just very cool um, that we're doing multi arc uh, all together, and this will work with OCI uh, as soon as we get the registry patched. So uh, we're in a really good spot. 
So what, so what happened there? I've been playing around in that namespace. Let's see what happened to our namespace. Uh, looks like we got our trolling image. Um, and then do, did we, um, and I don't think, so I think I ran the registry in the other, uh, in the other namespace, so uh, it's not gonna show up here. Um, we, can, we can definitely like pull some more images here if we want. Um, so you know, let's grab Redis because everybody, you know, it's super tiny and easy to run. Redois, oh my lord. There we go. Uh, so we got that, and you know, we can, you know, we, let's, uh, let's, I mean, we're just gonna show it working, right? Um, <laughs> so let, let's do, uh, let's actually show a little bit of labeling. So we're gonna run a container, we're gonna run a Redis container uh, with a uh, label of uh, Redis equals yes, uh, and then um, let's do here.io library redis latest, oh man, bad. latest, and then we'll call it redis, and then it should just run. Oh, we got a permission denied, so obviously just do that, and then we're fine. We'll get the, all this fixed, and now it's, oh no, I'm gonna delete that. Have that, and then, uh, well, anyways, but point is, uh, <laughs> point is we have container, well, it, it actually wasn't created. Anyway, so let's switch back to our other namespace, and, and let's play around with uh, the data I have in there, because uh, the next thing I wanna show you is labels, or, whoops, yeah, I mean namespaces. Uh, there we go, and then we should do CTR LS, and we have all these, these great containers. So uh, right now, the filtering PR is still out there. I think it's okay, like there might be some areas of syntax we wanna reserve, but it's, it's Unicode aware. So I have some, like I showed before, I have the year of the dog, uh, and I have a poop emoji, because that's the funnest emoji, uh, and some other labels, like this is a registry. Um, I don't know, I'm sure more creative people can come up with cooler uh, stuff. So I can, I can do the kind of the same things, and, and, and mostly this is just showing that this works, so it shouldn't be that exciting of a demo. Um, but that's not what, we're, we're not here to build exciting, we're here to build boring. Uh, unfortunately, that did not work, I, and I have no clue why that did not work. Uh, let's, let's do, uh, oh, I know why it didn't work. And I did this like uh, earlier today. Uh, so basically, um, all the labels work on something called field paths, and this is a concept uh, that we, uh, well, we could say we stole it from protobuf, or we could say we just like extended, we used the protobuf concepts of field paths. And so like everything, uh, you can reference any field on the container metadata object using these field paths, and then you can match on those. So in this case, the year label was under labels, and that worked great. Um, we can do the same thing, we can also, um, we, can, we can try and list other things too. Let's say we wanted um, you know, all the containers with the year and the poop emoji, um, uh, and you can see we've, we've, we've listed all of those containers, and that's great. Um, the, the other thing you can do um, is if you wanted to have uh, list everything with the labels and poop emoji, emoji we can see we don't have any matches to that. So um, you can do kind of and and or constraints on, uh, with this labeling syntax. Um, and then that's, I think that's the, the most of it. So, so right now the filter syntax is out in a PR um, and I have integrated this with, with uh, the containers command. Um, but we wanna use the same labeling, labeling syntax across the system. So you'll be able to uh, query and filter things with the same labeling syntax across containers, images, snapshots, events, and content. So um, it's, it's pretty, uh, pretty, pretty useful. Um, and as far as like namespaces, um, namespaces are just a, uh, a, a metadata concept. So if you notice, like if I pull trollin, uh, well, let's do trollin, because that's a big one. Um, the, the metadata is, it will, will get re-pulled, um, but we can tell that it's quite fast because actually we're sharing, uh, we're sharing data across these. So we can do this again in our default namespace, uh, where I don't remember if we have trolling or not, but it's still very, very fast. Um, and I can even, I can even uh, remove that, um, and since it's pinned to the other namespace, um, it, the, the new poll, so we can see here if we do image ls, images ls, we can see, uh, trust me, that, that trolling is not there, 
uh, we can repull it, and it's very, very fast because all the content's actually cached, but the metadata is now was not registered in that particular namespace. So, uh, and we're still working on like what maps correctly to the namespace and not, uh, like Kubernetes has a really good definition of what maps to the namespace and not, and we're trying to figure out what, what are the elements of that that will be, that'll work well for container D as well. So, any questions? All right. Thank you. Okay, so now we'll take a 15 minute break and uh, so we'll be back at uh, yeah, uh, 10.35.